Hey, I'm Hannah Weiss, the Director of Education at the Science Museum of Western Virginia, and this is your Moment of STEM. And as we're still in March and Women's History Month, I thought it would be really fun to talk about another famous woman in STEM. So this week, we're going to talk about Hedy Lamarr. That's right, the actress. See, as a science educator, I hear way too often people tell me that, you know, they think science is really, really cool, but they're much more of an arts person which is fine. The arts are incredibly important. I don't want to imagine what our world would be like without them. But what frustrates me is this idea that there's somehow this huge divide between science and the arts, which is just not true. And Hedy Lamarr is someone who really took this kind of imaginary divide and crushed it in perfectly manicured hands. See, Hedy Lamarr was something of, well, a Hollywood it girl in the 30s and 40s. She starred in a number of films and was considered kind of a, a world-renowned or, or really well-known beauty, like, like a bombshell. But what's not really known about her is that she was a scientist, an inventor. In fact, there are a lot of reports of her even having kind of a, a mini invention station in some of the trailers that she had on, on film studios. She had incredibly wide-ranging interests, too, studying everything from, from chemistry to aeronautic engineering. But what she's perhaps most well-known for, aside from, you know, the films, is a patent that she and a collaborator, who was actually also a musician, hold. You see, Hedy Lamarr was, was in films kind of at the height of World War II, and during World War II, we used a lot of torpedoes. But there was this big, big fear that someone would be able to jam or, or block the signal that was sent to the torpedoes to, to tell them what to do. So Hedy Lamarr and her collaborator, this musician, they worked together to create something that they called a secret communication technique, but that we know today as frequency hawking. In fact, they even hold a patent for it. So frequency hopping is basically well, okay, imagine that you have an RC, a remote-controlled car, right? You've got the controller in your hand, and the car is on the floor, and if you move the controller, it sends a signal down to the car, and the car moves, right? It sends a signal on a frequency. But if someone blocks that frequency, prevents it from getting to the car, the car won't move, which is a problem if your car is actually a torpedo. So what Hattie Lamar imagined was the ability to kind of hop between different frequencies, to, to change bands. So that even if, if one of these was blocked, it would be only a little bit of the signal. Most of it would still get through, so if you moved your controller, your, your car would still move. It's frequency hopping. Now, at the time, it was considered too complicated to be used. But a little bit down the line, a few years later, it was in place in a lot of uh, military applications. But it's also something that has incredible applications to civilian life. It's a part of technologies that we use every day, like cell phone communication and, and Wi-Fi and, and Bluetooth. I cannot imagine a modern world without Hedy Lamarr's contributions. She's truly someone who really blended science and the arts to create something wonderful. And if you'd like to know any more about Hedy Lamarr, her life and her work, you can check out the links below. Otherwise, I'm Hannah Weiss from the Science Museum of Western Virginia, and if you'd like to explore how the arts, like theater, and science can combine, you should check out our camps. The Science Museum of Western Virginia is collaborating with Mill Mountain Theater to really explore, reimagine, and envision some of the fantastic things you can do when you combine theater and sciences.